So we now want to generalize homotopy theory. To do that, let's think about what we were, what were particularly important classes of functions in our um, topological homotopy theory. That is, from which things were we able to develop a lot of that theory? Well, it seemed, particularly in the last video, that th these three were central. Weak homotopy equivalences, relative cell complexes, and serif vibrations. The idea when we build this general setting for homotopy is to construct analogs to these classes of functions in such a way that their relationships with, e with each other, some of which we saw last time via lifting properties, is maintained. This is the profound insight formalized by Daniel Quillen, and the axioms he came up with form what is called the model category structure. It turns out that this is a particular presentation of a more general structure of infinity one categories, which are again a uh, kind of MN category. But as is often the case with higher levels of, of abstraction, it becomes difficult to compute things at these higher levels of abstractions. Model categories form a nice setting that is sufficiently general, yet easy enough for computations. At first blush, it might be difficult to see why we would need to generalize um, past the category tope. It's not so much that we want to do a homotopy theory on an entirely different type of spaces, but that we can specialize and extend the theory for certain situations. I guess I'm thinking in particular of how, for example, pointed compactly generated topological spaces have their own model structure, as do spectra, which are whole collections of topological spaces. But we can extend to other things too, such as a particular set of functors, which are called topologically enriched functors. So here's a starting point. We want to first generalize this notion of a weak homotopy equivalence. A category with weak equivalences is a category that has a subclass W of its morphisms with the following properties. W contains all the isomorphisms of C, and it is closed under 2 out of 3. This is basically like the transitive equivalence upgraded. So if any two of the morphisms in that diagram are in W, then so is the third. So I can't speak to some of this remark, but the essence of what it says is this. We in fact can already determine a homotopy theory with just the category with weak equivalences. The specific way in which this is done is by forcing weak equivalences to become actual homotopy equivalences. But as you can imagine, we lose some nuance when we do this. The idea that NLAB refers to as simplicial localization is what this is. It says that this is useful really only when we introduce further structure, which I assume is to make up for this gap. I might go into this later, but for now, that is all I can say on the subject. NLAB provides references as usual. But yeah, the further axioms we introduce will be um, for the purpose of making the resulting model category more tractable and easier to work with. So here's the definition for a model category. It is of course a category along with three particular classes of morphisms. So just to mention terminology, first of all, COF and FIB are obviously shorthand for COF vibrations and fibrations. We will also call elements of W intersect COF as acyclic COF vibrations and W intersect FIB as acyclic vibrations. This should immediately remind you of the analogs from topological homotopy theory. But remember how we wanted to somehow distill enough properties about these analogs from topological homotopy theory so that their essential relationships remained. Well, here is one set of requirements that does that. We require that W makes the category into a category with weak equivalences, obviously, and that the pair of acyclic cofibrations, comma fibrations and the pair of cofibrations, comma acyclic vibrations are weak factorization systems. We'll define weak factorization systems in the next video. But this should immediately remind you of the strange lifting duality we uncovered last time, that the maps that lifted against acyclic generating cofibrations were regular serif vibrations, and the maps that lifted against regular generating cofibrations were acyclic serif vibrations. Once we've solidified these definitions, we'll come back and formally prove the model category structure on topological spaces proper, which our intuition is already leading us to believe exists and is as we expect.